Hello friends, and welcome to Autism, the Other A Word by Amina Mosley. I'm Amina, and that's A-M-I-N-A-H. I'm doing it with my left hand this time, so working on being ambidextrous and sign. How you coming along? Um, okay, so I wanted to give you guys a bit of a story time today as opposed to our regular, I guess our regularly scheduled program. I want to, because we're talking about schedules, discuss what routine is and predictability is. And routine is simply something that you do on a regular basis, um, a certain way of doing things that you may have, um, a certain order of things that you may have. And I want to talk to you about predictability. Many children with special needs along the autistic spectrum are they work well with routine. Um, they work well with an actual schedule, something that they know can happen next. Um, many people use what's called the picture exchange communication system, and we will go into that if that's something you guys are interested in. So comment below if you're interested in the picture exchange communication system, which is also known as PEX. Um, but what it is is a visual cue of this happens first, then this. So it could be breakfast happens first, then the school bus comes. It could be reading time happens first, then circle time. So it simply, you can make your own picture exchange system. It's actually pretty straightforward. And it is something that helps a child to adjust to their, a, a new transition uh, or a new situation with a transition much more easily, at least in my experience, I found this. So story time. So I'm in the Maldives and we're going on a snorkeling trip. And I'm very used to snorkeling in many countries. And um, usually there's a boat involved. So I know that there's going to be a boat. There is There are life vests involved. <laughs> there are... Um, flippers and a snorkel kit, et cetera. So these are, these are visual cues for me that this activity is going to happen and that I'm safe. So we're walking to the boat. We've already received instruction on, for example, when you're swimming with the whale sharks, this is what you do. When you're swimming with the manta rays, this is what you do. When you're swimming with the turtle, this is what you do. So we've gotten that in preparation for the animals when we're actually there, but on the way, we didn't get preparation for what to do on the way or what to expect on the way. So again, what I'm expecting is a boat with walls and often a ceiling and things to hold on to, to be able to visually see where the life vests are and to be told these are where the life vests are. We're going to, it takes about 30 minutes to get here. It takes about, you know, so I'm used to that. And you may be too, right? Especially if you're well-traveled, you know, you go to some place and they give you instruction, etc. So we get to the boat and the boat is <laughs> like, the boat is a, a small boat, let's just say. And all of the people who are native to the Maldives are up front the driver, the uh, guest house owner, the guest house uh, supporter. And so, so there are five men in the front of the boat, two of us ladies in the back of the boat, which is fine. I just don't know what to expect. If you've ever been on a small boat, you'll know that once it takes off, it has a bit of a, an angle. So I'm in the boat, in the back of the boat, and I'm having a time because not only is it at an angle, but it's bouncing. And I'm frustrated because I, there are no walls or no ceiling. And I'm saying, okay, well, okay, how do I deal with this? We are now 10 minutes into this ride and I'm beginning to hyperventilate. I'm doing everything I know how to, to be very centered. I'm meditating, I'm saying the words calm centered, calm, centered, calm, centered, reminding myself that I'm okay. 
it was not working. It was. Have you ever had a time like that where you're, you're doing all that you know how to do? You're breathing, you're all that you know how to do to calm down and it wasn't working. So I reach out to my housemate, Karina. And Karina, being amazing, got it. She got it all at once that I was nervous and I was having a meltdown because at this point I'm now tearing up and I'm crying and my body is physically showing I am upset. There is, there is so much going on with me. She got it, she squeezed my hand back and she kind of, she, she was just there for me holding a space. By now, the gentlemen are turning around and trying to figure out what's going down with me. I am done essentially with not having walls. <laughs> I am upset and they don't understand what the problem is. They're fine. Again, they do this every day, no big deal. And my housemate is a trooper. She's sitting down, lounging, relaxing. I am absolutely hyperventilating. There's so many cues that you could see that I was uncomfortable. I was told in that moment, hey, you know, what you could do is we, we have to go back. You know, if, if you can't take this little bit, this little bit of time, we have to go back. Now for me, going back wasn't an option and I wasn't interested in going back. I just needed to calm down. My challenge was I wasn't prepared for this. If I was prepared for it, having gone on snorkeling and scuba diving ships in the past, I would have been okay. Not so much. So after I spend some time <laughs> explaining that I am used to walls and a ceiling, and again, at minimum walls that come at least to shoulder height when you're seated, and then you go up and out of the boat, just, just, Anyway, I can't even, I'm guessing you can see my frustration even in the story. My wonderful, incredible housemate Karina was saying, listen, she's very, very nervous, but she's okay. Um, and she just wasn't prepared for this. So I think it was some kind of sign <laughs> because the rain started coming. So light drizzle. So if you're going fast on a boat and rain is coming down, it's hitting you hard. She covered her face with a towel and let them know, yeah, I'm okay. I just need to cover my face with a towel because the rain is hitting me and it's hard. I'm feeling like hail almost. I took a cue from that and said I could do the same thing to cover you know, the rain from my face. But once my face and my head was covered, my sense of peace went up. My sense of freaking out essentially went down. And in that moment, in that moment, I understood what a meltdown is. In that moment. I'm sharing that because predictability is really important. I've done the snorkeling adventures before, jumping off a boat into the ocean with only a life vest basically to hold you up and your swimming skills. I have been on several boats, most of them much bigger or much deeper where there were walls around me. In this particular instance, I had to move to the floor. Once I put that over my head, I was calm and I said, well, how can I get walls around me? I sat on the floor, then I had walls around me. I restored my peace. Now imagine how that could have been different if I was warned, listen, we're going to be on a boat that's smaller than a speedboat you arrive to the island on. Listen, it's going to be about 30 minutes between stops. The water may be choppy. We will be at an angle. We will be bouncing up and down so that I could prepare my body and share if I had a concern I could not eat, like, I need a visual cue of the life vest. I did not even see life vests and I shared that with them. They showed me the life vest and then passed me the life vests. Imagine though, I was able to say what I need. I was able to share and I consider myself pretty articulate, but I was even at a loss for how to communicate in my frustration. Imagine that's your loved one 
who cannot adequately right now access the verbiage and they are freaking out because you're doing something that's familiar but that's not the way that it's usually done or in the same environment or in the same um order i got it and so i ask you and encourage you when you are setting up your schedule when you are setting up your routine keep those things in mind now we want to be careful not to do things so rigidly that your loved one doesn't understand that change and adjustment does need to happen from time to time. But what I will say is that a child's receptive language, things that they understand versus their expressive language, things that they can actually say, vocalize, give out to you that you understand, their receptive language is typically much higher as is pretty much for most adults. So they understand a lot more than they might be able to communicate. Talk to them. If there is a change in your schedule for whatever reason, talk to them. It may seem like, oh, it's just 5.30 instead of six o'clock. Just say, we're having dinner a little earlier today. Yay, we're gonna do something different. Prepare them. Because if you wanna prevent the meltdown that an adult had, <laughs> in, a, in a familiar situation, you get to do that. So support your loved ones and even think of ways where, you know, a lot of times we're thinking, oh, this child has a diagnosis. They're so different than me. In that moment on that boat, under that towel, quietly with all or most of my senses covered, um, with my sense of smell being muted because the towel was over me, so I couldn't smell so much of the seawater. With my sense of taste muted again, my mouth wasn't open under this sheet, little saline could get in. With my eyes being covered and closed, most of what I saw was darkness. With my hearing even being muted, um, if you've ever seen a child, for example, do this, or an adult on a train platform go like this because it's too much. So. Um, all of those things being calmed at once, it supported me in knowing why sometimes children get quiet or feeling why. I understand the why, but feeling the why, why they may go under the table, why they may go into a dark closet where you're thinking what's in there, calm is in there, <laughs> very little stimulation is in there. So consider the ways that you can relate to your loved one, the ways that you can say, oh, I can do this a little bit differently. I can do this a little bit better. And think of them, support them in predictability. Imagine if you went to work every day and it was just chaos or school every day and it was just chaos. You didn't have a routine. Nobody told you what to expect ever. So support yourself in doing your best to empathize with your loved one, but also support them in preparing them if things are going to look a little bit different. Or even if you think things will look the same, it never hurts to say, okay, first story time and then we're going to bed. It doesn't hurt. You support them and the likelihood is that you diminish the likelihood of meltdowns. Okay, long story, but I had to share that because Again, in that moment, I hated going through that. I can't tell you enough, friends, that I it, it did not feel good. I felt out of control. My breathing was labored. I did not know my housemate very well. We had only met two days prior, but she was who I was able to reach out to and say, help me with my hands. And she understood. So you need to be that for your loved one. They're going to reach out to you and they're essentially communicating, help me in a way that I can, um, in a way that you can understand. So you support them. And again, do that by having your routines be predictable, having the thing that comes next be a predictable thing, if at all possible. And when things shift, simply explain it to them. You won't see this therapist's name, let's say Amina. You won't see Amina today, okay? You'll see Amina tomorrow. And you're thinking, they don't know what today or tomorrow is. That's okay. Just share with them so that their body can adjust to that. Oh, okay, I'm not going to see Amina today. I'm going to do something different. 
in my experience, it very much supports them in transitioning and having less and more predictable meltdowns, if that makes sense to you. Thank you for listening, friends. I can't tell you how much that impacted me and how much I get to support the children that I work with at this point because of that experience. My empathy level is so high for my specific uh, clients and for this community in particular. Thank you for everything, for being present, for liking, for subscribing, for sharing with three other people this week. And if you have a similar experience, please let me know what you did to cope or let me know how you build in a routine or help your loved one adjust when things aren't going to go the way that they're used to. Okay, friends, bye for now.